Remember yesterday when you were talking to me up here? Yes. Do you remember what you were saying to me? Um, lots of it, yes. Yeah. Do you remember how when you started you said, you said to me, you're Jesus, and then off you went? Do you remember that? Yes. What do you feel about that now? But you can't help me. Can that, you, did you that, get... that in reality you're just a man doing a job and I've got to do it for me. Yes. So can you see how you were expressing your rage really in that moment towards me? What you were doing in that moment was you were saying that I would somehow be able to fix this in you. Can you see that? Yeah. And there was that expectation in you that I somehow fix something in you. So that was an expression, even though you were crying, that was an expression of anger. You were ragefully crying in that moment. You were actually wanting me to fix something rather than you actually feel the painful emotion you were experiencing. Now the next thing that happened after that was that you did exactly the same thing with one of your sons. Remember, what, what you, one of the things you said with your son was, you know, you asked him how he's doing, and he turned around and he got angry with you. And remember you were crying about that? Yeah. But actually, that was just masking over some rage towards men as well. What you were masking over there was the fact that you had created this rage within him, and now you're upset that he's doing it to you and you want him to stop. That was the emotion. But I gave him permission no, to, be angry, to be angry. No, you didn't. I know verbally you did. But from an emotional perspective, you're, you're saying to him, please don't be angry with me, son. Please don't be angry with me, son. This hurts me. That's the emotion that was coming from you towards him in that instant. That's why he reacted to it. So, so what was happening there was again a denial. You were expecting your son not to be rageful with you because you didn't want to feel the pain of your own emotion. So you remember then you said, to, you said the same, a similar thing about God soon after that in the conversation. You felt angry with God that God's created this system where you did things. Do you remember that? Where you did things to other people that harmed them and you did them unconsciously is what you were saying. Yeah. Now what you were doing in that instance was you were blaming God for the pain you were feeling. And in every one of those instances you are not going to fully allow yourself to feel the pain itself. Can you see what I'm saying to you? Now I didn't raise this with you yesterday because you weren't in the space where I could say these things. You were more in the space today where I could say them. But what was actually happening in that, almost in that entire interaction, there was a projection of emotion in every single case of anger towards me, God, your son, and instead of you allowing yourself to completely feel the pain you were in. And, and the, so how do I get to that then? Well, there's, 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 the issue is that you're still not fully willing to feel that pain without feeling like someone else is to blame for it. Do you follow me? So at the moment, there's still this feeling in you that your parents are to blame for it, God's to blame for it, AJ's to blame for it, Jesus is to blame for it, right? your son is to blame for it, but there's, there's this, not this full feeling in you that actually no one's to blame for it, I've just got to feel it. Do you see the difference? I've just got to feel it without projecting the blame, without projecting the, need, the, the desire for someone else to take it away from me. If you're telling me that in that moment of being so broken down, I still wasn't feeling the depth of my pain, then I don't understand. I know. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because at, at that moment, what you were doing was you were projecting anger at God, at me, at your son, at your father, but, but you were not yet at that point fully experiencing the grief of the emotion itself. 
the pain of the emotion itself. So what true repentance is, is feeling the pain of the emotion itself. The pain of the emotion that you were experiencing yesterday was that you have harmed other people. That was the feeling you had. You've harmed your sons. Yes. That was the feeling you had. But instead of just feeling that feeling, you were blaming God for it, you were blaming me for it, wanting me to take it away from you, you were even blaming your son, you were blaming your father, but you weren't allowing yourself just to feel that you, you, not them, you had created harm in others. Now when you allow yourself to allow yourself to fully feel that you created the harm in others, without feeling blame for any single other person, then you will be repentant. And that's when God's love can reach in you and take away the causal emotion. Does that make sense to you? When you're prepared to feel the pain of everything you've caused, that's when God's love can enter in you and pull out the causal emotion. Until that time, you'll be going through this cycle. I'm not sure I can believe you, though. I know. But that's something you'll have to and, work out between and this yourself is the first and time. This is the first time I've gotten to the, to the reality, if you like, because it's real for me, yep. um, that I don't actually believe you. Yeah, that's right. And this is why you revert. It's not that I don't want to. I know that. It's not that I don't want to repent. It's not that I don't want to own. It is. That people. It isn't. It is. I know I've hurt others. No, no, no. Stop for a moment. Your actions yesterday prove that you don't want to own. Your actions were blaming God, blaming me, blaming your son, blaming your father, but not feeling the damage you have done to someone else. That was your action yesterday, which is proof, in fact, that you don't want to feel that particular emotion. So there's other emotions you have wanted to feel. I'm not saying I'm not saying this is right across the board. I'm saying with this particular emotion, which is the emotion that you feel is a law of compensation emotion that you have damaged your own children. The truth is that you do not want to see the extent of the damage, nor do you want to feel it inside of you. Okay, so what do I need to do? Well, pray to God about the desire to feel it. Pray to God about, because whenever you're, whenever you're angry with God, or you're angry with me, or you're angry with your son, or you're angry with your father, that's when you're demonstrating a desire not to feel it. Because remember, anger is the thing that's suppressing the, the emotion. It keeps you away from the emotion. When you fully get into that painful feeling, and one of the statements you said to me yesterday was, if this is how much pain I'm going to have to feel, I don't want to feel it, is one of the statements that you, that you said. And I said, yes, Jen, this is how much pain you're going to have to feel. And you are going to have to feel it if you want to get closer to God. That's the statement I said to you in return. But you didn't hear that very well yesterday. The key is to allow yourself to fully connect with the grief inside of yourself. There's no blame, oh, there's no blame coming from me here. This is just saying to you, fully connect to the grief inside of you right, of what you've created. I'm afraid, AJ. I know. People. The one person that's really close to me, that I've let get close to me, calls me damaged. Yeah. And <laughs> Ch judges me. But aren't you damaged? Like, aren't I damaged? Well, I've, I've mentioned publicly all of my damage, so yes, that, I'm damaged. That means to me that I'm not ever going to be I'm damaged. You can't fix it. You now, can't ever this, be healed. This is your emotion now, and this is a good emotion to connect to, because it, it's what you believe. It's not true. The truth is I am damaged, but also the truth is I can heal. That's the point of us doing this, Jen. Because in the end, we can all hear. I'm so afraid of the judgments. Yeah. I'm afraid of them. Okay. So let yourself feel that fear and then work through that, what it means to you. But you, you can get do this just like anyone else can. But when somebody says to you, you're damaged, they're true, they're right. You are damaged. 
And if someone says that's it's a me, judgment. well, no, it's the truth. It's a judgment if the person looks down on me when they say it. But the truth is, I'm damaged, you're damaged, and every single person here is damaged. We're damaged. all damaged. And it's, I'm not judging anyone, including myself. I'm just stating the truth. But if I say, you're damaged and, and you're a bad person and I just can't, you know, and I look down upon you and I have that feeling coming at you, now I'm judging you. Now, if you feel judged from me just saying that you're damaged, then you're just feeling your own judgment of yourself about you not being perfect. So feel it. Because that's all it is. It's not real. It's just your judgment of yourself. So you need to feel that feeling. It's not the truth, though. The truth is that you, just the same as anyone else, can release all of this damage. And you, all of us here will, at some point in our future life, become perfect. Okay, so Even though we're damaged. It's really scary for me. I feel fear, okay, right now. Good. I felt it when I walked down towards you. Yeah. How do I go from there to connect to the desire of what you're presenting to me. Okay? Well, the first thing to do is release the fear. What do I do fear. next? Release the fear. So, when you go back to your seat in a second, have you got a notepad with you or something like that? Yeah. Get out that and start writing down what you're afraid of now. The truth is that you are afraid that I'm not saying who, I'm, who I am, who I say I am, that I'm not really who I say I am. The truth is that, that you feel that if you deal with your emotions it might not work, that, that in the end, you might be dealing with the emotions and, and do all of the things I'm suggesting to you, and in the end, that it might not work. Yes. And the truth is that you feel that if you deal with these emotions, that you'll finish up losing a relationship that you're only just trying to get. Like, the truth is that you have a lot of fears still about these things. Allow yourself to acknowledge them, write them down. But specifically about my sons, I need to get to the next step, okay? So I'll... what are you afraid of? With your sons? <laughs> you're afraid you've done so much damage that they'll never recover? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I can assure you that when you release the damage within yourself, they will begin to recover. That's yes. the truth. Does yes. that make sense? So, so that's what you need to do. But, but at the moment, the thing you need to do is just feel the full extent of the damage to your sons. And by the way, this applies to all parents. Allow yourself to feel the full extent of the damage to your children and pray to God, ask God to forgive you for that damage. And you will find that God can then, through love, just pick, grab hold of all that, causal emotion inside of you that may take a hundred years for you to deal with any other way and God will be able to just help remove that from you. Does that make sense? Allow yourself to do that. So what I'm saying again applies to all parents here and really all people who have had an interaction with another person that's damaged them. Allow yourself to feel the pain of the damage but take that to God and you'll find in that instance you'll be one of the, will be one of the closest moments you've had with God. When you do that. Can I please ask you? Jeffrey left and went home in the car with Nicholas, my other boy. Yep. And they had an argument and Jeffrey ex exploded. Yep. And beat the dashboard and broke his wrist at the same time as I was up here. Yep. Am I to blame for that? There because was I wasn't fully repentant. There's a direct relationship between their interaction and what is happening with you emotionally. So, so you, I'm not saying you're to blame. Obviously, he is an adult man who can fully not bash the, bash the dash of board of the car if he chooses to not do it. But what I'm saying is there is a direct relationship between the emotions that you refuse to process within yourself and what happens to them. So allow yourself to see that. Their argument was caused by emotions in them that you partially created. When I say partially, there was an absence of a father or a father that created it as well, not just you. 
But that was my decision anyway. No, that's, that's fine. The key is for you to just see the damage you've done and allow yourself to fully experience it. When you do that and direct that to God, that's when repentance occurs, and that's also when divine love flows into your soul. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I'll talk more about this subject when we talk about prayer and other subjects in the future. But I wanted to address this with you because yesterday you were in this state where you were crying and feeling some of that emotion, but there was lots of anger being projected while you were doing it, and you didn't realise that. In your pain, you didn't realise no, how much you were projecting out of everything else. Does that make sense? Thanks.